بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيدا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها وقود الأرواح وغذائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم First of all, Eid Mubarak to you and yours. I trust Uguti, everyone who is here Nandi. Even though it was a very different Ramadan, I pray that we all tried our utmost to make the best of it, reaping as much reward as possible. A believer is always striving to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of the situation he finds himself in. Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam was with Allah in the presence of his father Yaqub while everything was going well. He was still with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when his brothers betrayed him. He was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was taken and sold as a slave. He never lost sight of Allah while working in the palace. He was not distracted by the majestic royalty. of the palace. He was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the wife of the king tried to seduce him and he was still with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when ladies were drooling over him. He remained with Allah in prison and he was still with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was in charge of the Baytul Ma'al, distributing in the most fair manner. And he was still in divine presence when he forgave his brothers. So a believer's opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or servitude to him, capital H, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change with the changing of circumstances. His heart is forever fixed or directed at Allah. He makes do with whatever situation he finds himself in. اِتَّقِ لَا حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ The Prophet ﷺ said, Fear Allah whenever and wherever you are. It's easy for a millionaire to give from what Allah has blessed him with. The question is, will he still be as generous should he go for broke? Allah forbid. So in light of Ramadan during the lockdown, did you pray at home with family as much as you usually pray in the masjid? Or is the masjid the right platform to pull out a show? Abafundi Sibe to speak of a man who used to pray in the front row for years. And that one day when he was late and there was no space in the front for him, he didn't enter the masjid out of shyness of being seen in the back seat. And at this point, he realized that uh, all these years he was rushing for the front row simply to be seen by people and it had little to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kana Allah wa la shay'a ma'a. Allah was when there was nothing alongside him and he hasn't changed since. So acts of righteousness do not raise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high, any level higher than what he already is. Na hadith Qudsi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, O my servants, if the first of you, the last of you, the human and the jinn, were to have a heart of the most fearful man among you, ma zada dhalika fi mulki shay, that will not increase anything of my kingdom. And the opposite is true. If we all decided to, to be wicked and sinful, that will not decrease the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even a bit. So our staying at home, And staying safe should not interfere with our connection to Allah if we are truly connected. Spiritually, lockdown will affect everyone illa al-musalleen, except those who pray. And who are those? Allah says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ They are those who are always in salah. Nothing distracts them from salah. Whether masjids are locked or open, they are forever committed to salah. They stay connected to their Lord. The salah of the nafs is keeping away from contravening the sharia. The salah of the heart is purification and guarding it from inclining to the dunya and its lusts and enticements. The salah of the soul is the removal of the veils, 
divine witnessing until one fears none but Allah and he hopes from none but Allah. He loves none as much as he loves Allah and he worships none but Allah, mighty and majestic. This connection is possible, locked down or not. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, أَحَبُّ الْعَمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَامُهَا وَإِنْقَالِ The most beloved of acts to Allah are the continuous ones, even if they are little. And in the spirit of perseverance, the fact that Ramadan is over should not affect our connection to the Book of Allah. So we continue looking at Surah Al-Hujurat. In our previous session, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized the importance of brotherhood among the believers. Now we drill it down even further by highlighting the things that are forbidden for us uh, to try to maintain the brotherhood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe. لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهن Oh you who believe let not men ridicule other men perhaps they may be better than them nor let women ridicule other women it could be that they are better than them Sukhriya is not to just joke around with your buddies but it is making a mockery of someone, making a laugh stock of another person. It usually has something to do with deception and lying about him or her, seeking to find deficiency in someone. This is forbidden. Men should not make mockery of other men, and likewise women should not ridicule each other. It could be that those being made a laughing stock are in fact better than their detractors in the sight of Allah. And that is the only sight that matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a distinction between al-qawm and an-nisa. Al-qawm is usually translated as people. In a comprehensive meaning, it includes men, uh, women, but technically it doesn't. Al-rijalu qawwamun. Qama yaqum. It is to stand. The jahiliya understanding was that men are those who should stand up for their people or tribe. Hence, Al-Qawm is usually translated as people. A man is he who stands for something. As in the words of Al-Hajj, Malik al-Shabazz, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. Al-Qawm, some have said that if women were part of Al-Qawm, there would have been no need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to caution the women separately after mentioning Al-Qawm. Wala nisa o min nisa. But others say, no, women are in fact part of Al-Qawm. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns women separately is because sukhriya, ridiculing others, is predominantly done by women. So an extra admonishing is necessary. Moving forth, Allah further says, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ do not negatively criticize, slander one another, and do not call each other by offensive or demeaning nicknames. Alums is afflicting your brother's or your sister's honor by secretly talking about him or her in a way to expose their faults. This is impermissible. What's also impermissible is insulting each other with demeaning titles. Bi isalismul fusuq ba'd al iman wa man lam yatub. Wicked or evil is the word or the name of disobedience after uh, a person has believed. And whoever does not repent, those are the wrongdoers, oppressive on themselves. It is said that the name of, of obedience here, for example, is when a person who used to be a Jew or a Christian is still addressed as a Jew or a Christian, even after he has embraced Islam. And this used to be the practice of Muslims, seeking to demean the later converts. And this is still happening nowadays, when some people refer to us as converts or reverts, you can somehow still sense a level of arrogance, a claim of seniority, like there's nothing you can tell me. 
But even in our small communities, this is still happening. For example, when they ask, which Hassan are you talking about? And you hear, I want to say, Loom postoli, loom zita, we sioni, referring to a Muslim uh, using his or previous lifetime's title. Bi isalismul fusuq badal iman. Evil is the word or the name of disobedience after a person has embraced Islam. Now, there are various uh, narrations on the reason why this verse was revealed. One of them is that which was related by Ikrimah that it was revealed about some of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who used to make fun of Umm Salama, another one of the wives, due to her shortness. And some said it was because they used to make fun of Safiya and calling her a Jewess because she was a Jew before she entered Islam. Another has it that Banu Tamim used to make racial remarks directed at Bilal, Amar, and Suhaib, since they were non-Arabs, which is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address in the next few verses, inshallah. And there are also versions that uh, says that it was revealed about a few Muslims who used to refer to Akrama as the son of Fir'aun, because his father was Abu Jahl, the fierce enemy of Islam, and his son became Muslim. This verse prohibits believers from doing three things. Firstly, sukhriya, ridiculing, and making mockery in an insulting way, usually lying about him or her. Secondly, alams, secretly harming a person's honor by exposing his or her faults. And thirdly, tanabazu bil alqab, addressing or referring to believers using terms that will smear the character in a way to lower his dignity or reputation. All these are either done by either speaking or just merely signaling with your eyes or hands. As Lady Aisha once made a sign with her hand signaling that Safiya is short and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was not impressed. He said, لَقَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَةً لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحْرِ لَمَزَجَتْهَ You have said a word which would change, meaning pollute the sea, if it were mixed with it. Now all these three acts are impermissible. They are the opposite of what brotherhood or sisterhood is supposed to be. And we all have faults. And the best that anyone can ever do is to keep yourself busy with rectifying your own faults. Lower your gaze from the faults of other people. One of the punishments of entertaining other people's faults is that you may end up with the same faults. And we have seen this often enough. So let that which you know about yourself uh, stop you from finding faults about others. Rather, spend more time thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from having saved you from those type of faults. The one who spends time thinking or working on his own faults has no time left to entertain or dwell in other people's faults. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Blessings be upon him whose own faults prevent him from finding faults with his believing brothers. And of course, sisters is implied. The way of the people of Allah is that they respect and venerate every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is simply because they understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create anything in jest, just passing time. Do not look at anyone with the gaze of disrespect or consider anyone to be unworthy or look down on him or her because in looking down on anyone is a sign that you see yourself on a higher level, on a higher maqam, on a higher rank. And this is the trait of Iblis. He saw himself better than our father Adam. Granted, our gaze may occasionally fall on people's faults at that instant, the least one can do is to remain silent about the faults of other people. In fact, it would be praiseworthy to try to find excuses for them and cover their faults in hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your faults for doing so. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Man satara musliman satarahu allahu fi dunya wal akhira Whoever covers the private matters of a Muslim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover his private matters in this life and in the next life.
will cover his shame. And he also said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, whoever concerns himself with the private matters of another Muslim, Allah will look into his private matters and then he will expose and shame him even if he were in the privacy of his home. Imam Malik once said, I have met people here in Medina who had no faults of their own, but they spoke about other people's faults so much that their faults became exposed. And I've also met people here in Medina, those with many, many faults, but because they kept quiet about other people's faults, so other people kept quiet about their faults too. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.